Hey YouTube, this is going to be a follow-up to my last video where I explained how to use Unreal's random stream along with the stud shuffle STL algorithm from C++. I already explained what random stream is and why you might want to use it in that video, so go check that one out if you need a refresher. But in that video, I claimed that it was really easy to write your own shuffle algorithm, but I never explained how to do it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to use blueprints only to write a general purpose macro that shuffles an array of any type using a random stream. Let's go. All right, so to shuffle an array, first we need to know how to shuffle an array. So there's a very simple and widely used algorithm called Fisher-Yates that takes a sequence and gives you back an unbiased permutation of that sequence in linear time. In other words, it gives you a fair shuffle with reasonable efficiency. So here's how it works. So here I have this array of the letters A, B, C, D, E, and I'm going to start an index, which I'm calling I at zero. Note that the last index in this case is going to be four because there are five elements and we're starting our count at zero. So step one is to choose a random number between I and four inclusive because four is the last index. So here we randomly choose two and name it J. Next, we swap the elements at locations I and J. So C moves to index zero and A moves to index two. Next, we increment I. If it's less than four after we increment it, we rinse and repeat. So since one is less than four, we go back to the top. Choose a random number between one and four this time since I is one. In this case, we got four. Swap the elements at index one and four. Increment, rinse, repeat. Notice that as we march onward, everything to the left of I has been shuffled, whereas everything to the right may or may not be yet. So in this case, we chose a random number between two and four, and we got back two and we're on index two. So that's fine. This basically just means that step two right here doesn't do anything since swapping an element with itself does nothing. So that's fine. This element just isn't gonna move right now, which is totally valid. So one more round through the steps. And when we get to step three this time, we're gonna increment I and it's gonna be four, which is not less than four, so we stop. Notice we don't need a special step for the last element. It was already shuffled by all the preceding steps. So we're done. Our array is nice and shuffled, and that was pretty simple if you ask me. So let's go implement that in Blueprints. So here's the level I'm gonna do this in. You can obviously do it wherever you want. I just have some code in my level blueprint here that's pretty similar to what I had at the end of the last video. I have an array of A, B, C, D, E, and on begin play, I'm just printing out that array, as you can see here. There it is. And you see I have this random stream here that's not hooked up to anything yet. So I want to tweak this code to shuffle the array using this random stream first before printing it out. Um, so we're going to write the code that does that here. So we're going to implement this as a blueprint macro. It needs to be a macro in order to use wildcards as input and output types, which we definitely want to do. We want to be able to use our algorithm to shuffle this array of strings right here, but we also want to be able to use it to shuffle an array of integers or actors or whatever. And so in order to represent that genericness in blueprints, we use wildcards. And for better or for worse, uh, mostly worse if you ask me, wildcards are only supported by blueprint macros, not blueprint functions. So we're stuck using a macro, which is unfortunately going to introduce a little bit of weirdness right off the bat for reasons that we'll see, but we'll walk through it all together. So I'm going to start by creating a blueprint macro library right in here. And it needs to be a subclass of object. Uh, and we'll just do that and we'll name it um, BP algorithms in case we think of any others we want to put in here. So I'll open that up and it opened on my other screen. Here it is. So by default, it gives us this thing, this new macro. We're going to change this to be called shuffle array using stream. And I actually think this is the same project where I have the C++ version of this. So I'm just going to put an M in front so we can remember that. Uh, this is the macro version. And so now let's go down here to the details and look at the inputs and outputs. So our inputs, let's make this bigger, are going to be an array of wildcards as our input array. And then we also need a parameter that is our random stream. And that's going to be of type random stream. And we only need one, so I'm going to change this to single. And then for our outputs, we are going to output an array 
of wildcards, just like our input. Something else that we're going to need in order to implement our macro properly is an execution pin on the input and the output, so let's add those as well. And I'll just drag those to be first. And so this looks pretty good. This is what I would expect the pins on our macro to look like. So let's just go back to our level blueprint and add a call to the macro and hook it all up properly before we come back and implement it. So back over here, I'm going to add a call to M shuffle array using stream. And this is our macro that doesn't actually do anything, but we can still use it in the right spot. And if we run this right now, we should actually see nothing appear on screen because we're not even returning anything from our macro right now. So the output here is just an empty array, so that makes sense. All right, so let's see how to implement this thing for real. So as I mentioned, right off the bat here, we're actually gonna see a little bit of weirdness due to the fact that this is a macro. So these inputs here are just whatever we're sending in from the outside, and they're not even variables or like values. They are literally just whatever we're plugging into those pins at the call site. So here we are plugging in a pure array pin into this input parameter. And so every time that we read from this array inside the macro, it's going to read again from that pure node. And it's not going to work because we're going to be trying to modify the input array. But then every time we go to read from it again, it's going to read directly from that make array node all over again. So we're not going to see any of our changes that we made. So we actually need to kind of make a copy of this input as well as the random stream actually into sort of local variables so that we can scribble all over them, mutate them, and then return them. Unfortunately, macros don't support local variables in the same way that functions do. There's actually a little bit of a workaround, um, a little bit of magic macro stuff that you can do. And that's what we're going to do right here. So I'm going to start here by adding a sequence node. And I'm going to add three pins to it. The third one is going to be our actual shuffle logic. The first two are just going to be setting up these local variables that I'm talking about. So off of our then zero pin, we're going to set up a copy of our random stream input here. So we're going to store that local variable in this thing called a local wildcard. And this is that macro magic I was talking about. This is only available in macros as far as I know. And it's just a way to place a temporary kind of anonymous variable and store a value in it and read from it later. So I'm putting it down here so that we can have easy access to it down at the bottom when we actually do our shuffle, but we're actually going to assign to it up top here. So I'll just add a call to assign. And the variable that we're going to assign to is this guy. And we need to figure out which value to plug in. Now, in the last video I talked about, we, we could just do this. We could just plug the stream directly into this. But in the last video, I mentioned how it's a really bad idea to just make a copy of a random stream. And that's exactly what this would be doing. Uh, what we should probably do instead is implement kind of a light version of the fork function that we did in the last video, which uses a random stream to create another random stream. And so that's what I'm going to do up here. I'm going to make a random stream. And the initial seed that I'm going to use is going to be based on some output from this random stream. So we're going to get a random integer from this stream. And we're going to use that as the seed of our new random stream. And we need to be careful here. We need to plug in something sensible for the max. I have this on my clipboard already. This is just the int max uh, constant. It'd be nice if there was a way to read that from blueprints. I couldn't figure out how, so I'm just I'm just hard coding that in here. Um, that's going to give us a wide range of seeds that our new random stream can have. So then we're going to plug that into the value that we are assigning to our local wildcard. And so that's our forked random stream. Now we need to do the same thing with our input array. This time we don't need to do anything fancy. We can literally just copy it into an array local variable. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a new local array of wildcards right here, which is exactly the type we want. And on our then one, I'm going to assign that to our input array. 
So now we have these two copies of our parameters down here and we can mutate these all we want. So now let's implement the core loop of our shuffle. And this is gonna be pretty straightforward. Before we add our actual loop, I'm just gonna grab the length of this array and I'm gonna subtract one from it. And that's gonna be our last index that's gonna bound our loop iterations as well as the range of random numbers we're gonna be generating. So let's go ahead and create an actual for loop now. And the first index is gonna be zero. The last index is going to be length minus one. And now we just need to generate a random number and swap with it like we did when we were talking about how the algorithm works. So the loop body is going to be a call to swap array elements, which is a handy node that pretty much does exactly what we want. It just takes in two indices and it swaps the positions of the elements at those indices. So the array that we're gonna be using is our array, of course. And one of the indices that we're gonna swap with is our current index. And that's the I from our example earlier. And then the second index that we're gonna swap with, our J, is going to be randomly generated by our random stream. So the way that we do that is we add a random integer from stream, random integer in range from stream rather, node here. And the output is gonna plug into our J slot down there. The min is going to be the index that we're currently on because you remember as we're marching forward, kind of the range of integers we're choosing from gets smaller and smaller. And then the max is just gonna be the length minus one. And of course the stream that we're using is our random stream. So that's it, that's the core of our algorithm. Then when we're completed, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna connect to our output pin and our output is gonna be our array local variable. And that should be it. So let's run our code and see if the array is shuffled like we'd expect. All right, A, E, B, D, C. That looks nice and shuffled. Let's try it one more time. A, E, B, D, C. So that's the same sequence of letters and that's good because we didn't change the seed in our random stream. So that means that we're getting deterministic output here. So let's go change the seed and see if it changes the output. So let's change the seed to like 42. And now we have CEADB, which is definitely different. And we'll just try one more for luck. BEACD. So our macro seems to be working. We're getting all these nice different sequences and they're all deterministic based on the seed that we pass in. So that's it. That's how you implement a shuffle algorithm in blueprints using random stream. Uh, I hope you agree that that was not that hard. Of course, we could clean this up. It looks a little bit like a spaghetti monster here. But aside from that, I think this is pretty cool. We've got this general purpose shuffle algorithm. It works on any type of input array and generates a deterministic result based on the stream that you pass in. So thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I'll see you next time. Oh, wait, one last thing you might have noticed is that our implementation here actually differs very slightly from the algorithm that we talked about. We're actually looping all the way through the last index in our for loop when we can actually stop one short of that as we saw in the visualization. So just to sanity test that, right now, if I run, we're getting B, E, A, C, D. Now let's actually just stop our loop one short of that just by adding another subtract node. We still need this one to plug into this node over here. So I'm not, I'm not just changing this to a two. I'm gonna create a new one and set this to one and plug that into our last index and we'll run again, and we still see BEACD. It's exactly equivalent if we stop one short, and it's a little bit more efficient. So that's a nice little micro-optimization we can do. All right, that's it. Bye.